Hello, I'm Gary Crowley and welcome to part three of the Demon Records Record Store Day 2020 preview. And uh, joining me is uh, the man in the No Demons Head of Product and Marketing, uh, Ben Stanley. Uh, ben, these final releases are all going to be available uh, through Record Store Day on the 24th of October. That's right, yeah. So this is our final batch, uh, the last three. So, uh, yeah. Well, good. Hopefully by, by then we'll have worked out how this is going to work and people would have worked a way to be able to go and get their records safely um, and the stores will be, will be thriving. Yeah, fingers crossed. Now, the first one that you're going to uh, talk about, I know is uh, a release, <laughs> a band who are very, very close to your heart. I've got a memory, actually, Ben, of, uh, of interviewing menswear in a bed um, in a hotel uh, next to um, Top of the Pops when it used to be recorded at, um, at up there in Watford. Uh, I'll have to dig that out and put that up on YouTube because it was quite surreal. But yeah, you go, Ben. So this was their album, oh, Nuisance. Yeah, it's a nuisance. Um, oh, menswear. Um, I'm trying to think. I was, nine, I was 15 when this record came out. I absolutely loved it. I bought all the singles, um, and it was an obsession for about six months. I just absolutely loved menswear. So we saw him, we saw him a couple of times. I remember we saw him at the we definitely saw him upstairs in a in a pub in Brighton. I think it was called the Richmond. I think, and I remember I always remember it, just looking around. It's just full of kids, all 15, 16, and one of those floors that was like a trampoline that just kept doing yeah. that thing. Um, and yeah, just you know. At a time when you didn't really, all you cared about was having enough money to, to buy, you know, cheeky three or four pints. Um, no one bothered about IDing back then. <laughs> and uh, probably bunked the train, it probably cost a fiver to get in. Oh, it's brilliant. But back at those yeah. the days. So, very, well, very happy to be doing about. Yeah, very happy to be doing this record, I have to say. So, um, and working with the band as well. Uh, we've been working with Johnny, Chris, and Matt Everett as well on this record. So, Good, it's good that they're as enthusiastic about this as, as we are, so that's been really nice. So, obviously, Crest on 180 gram orange vinyl. Um, the interesting thing about this one, Gary, is when this gets released on the 24th of October, it's actually going to be exactly 25 years to the day that it was 25 originally released. 25 years, that is frightening. Yeah, so, um, yeah, I mean, by, by coincidence, it sort of happened really, but. I don't know, it's a nice little omen, that, isn't it? So, um, so yeah, we're going a bit men's at the moment. We've got a box set out as well, and we're also going to be making their second album, Hey Tempo, which has never been on anything available on vinyl day before. So, if you like that men's wear, everything, everything's there. Just a little point on this one. This is slightly different from the original album. Um, we added on the, the, the uh, Lost track, Bones and Red Meat. You know that 90s thing where you used to keep, you used to keep the album playing on CD and 20 minutes into it, you'd get a little yes. little track. Um, yeah, so we've, we've added that on. That wasn't on the original vinyl. It's a fan favourite. We've also added on the single We Love You as well, which kind of, I guess, sort of fell in no man's land, really, neither between album one or two. So this is a slightly different configuration to the original record, but it's a, it's a cool thing to have. Now, let's um, move on to the next one. And uh, I mean, we talked about these guys in the, um, on the first, you know, Demon Records, Record Store Day 2020 preview. Uh, but yeah, yeah, tell us about this album and, uh, you know, why you're putting this one out, Ben. Well, and I if I need to ask. <laughs> yeah. So, London Suede, one of those weird anomalies uh, where contractually, legally in America, they're known as the London Suede. There is an act called Suede. In America, um, and I kind of I know I know it's always been hard for the US fans to get hold of Suede Records because of the legal issues. So it was an idea to kind of make these available for the US market. They've always been quite collectible London Suede things. I remember sending my poor sister when she was a um, air hostess for Virgin back in the day out to the mega store to go and get me a London Suede version of Dogman Star just because I thought it would you know to be say different, that, but just to be different, isn't it? Um, and yeah, so it's, it's, it's the classic album. Everyone knows it. Drowners, Metal Mickey, Animal Nitrate, plus every other classic track on the album. This is obviously Bernard and Brett era. Um, pressed on, again, lovely 180 gram clear vinyl. Again, hello. Yeah. Lovely, yeah. I can <laughs> see you, yeah. Thanks, mate. Um, 
Yeah, so it's um, it's I guess it's a bit of a fan curious thing, really, isn't it? Where you know you probably got London, you probably got Swave, but have you got a London Swave? So yeah, did, more, did, more more did, more for our US would, friends this one. Would you have seen them sort of um, you know? Would you have a defining memory of seeing them for the first time, Ben? Yeah, I th my my kind of defining memory, I think, it's funny. I found the ticket the other day. I would say my. my Probably my two favourite Suede gigs were the, I found it for the, I think it was the Kilburn show in 1996, which would have been coming up era. Um, again, I just, remember, I just remember at the time, it was so exciting. Um, everything about it from, again, from the sort of bunked train from where we were in West Sussex to um, up to London. Um, you know, the intro back in the day, I remember they used to, the intro was always to, to She with the big drum loop and used to go on for ages. It was one of those like, are really exciting things um yeah back to yeah probably like 2010 when i went to the teenage cancer trust gig where, they, where the band first got back together again and and, and you, again you really felt that you know that moment that buzz and excitement so yeah i mean i've i've, I've seen suede countless times over the years but they're probably the two ones that really jump out on me yeah great band I mean, for me, it would probably be the first and, and, and the last time. The first time I, I was lucky enough to see them, Ben, was at um, the Feet First Night, uh, which was a Tuesday night at the Camden Palace. And um, I went with a, a, a mate of mine who had already seen them uh, a few times. I remember trying to go and see them around about the time that they were on the demo clash, but uh, we got there too late. But we did get to, uh, to say hello to the band. But the gig at the Camden Palace, was just, you know, everything that, that I wanted it to be and more because, you know, the expectation was really beginning to, um, you know, to kind of, um, you know, bubble um, around about that time. I think that the Melody Maker front cover had just mm. come out and, and, you know, boy, they didn't disappoint. We went right down the front and, um, you know, just the excitement, you know, the, 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 the flash, excitement of the band and, and, and you know, all of that coming back from the audience as well. And the last time I saw them was a couple of uh, years ago. In fact, I went with the same pal, a friend of mine called Kevin. Uh, we went to see them at the, um, at the forum. And again, you know, the, 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 the atmosphere, you know, coming off the audience was just absolutely mm. incredible. Yeah, Brett, Brett's pretty unique, isn't he? He's still got that same yeah, energy. Yeah, he's a great front man. Yeah, definitely. Which uh, yeah, leads us into the last one, another great front yes. man. Yes. Bob Mould. So this really Circular Friends. Circular Friends uh, was a DVD release from getting the facts right from two thousand and six. Um, it's only ever been the audio has only been available as part of a DVD. So this is the first time you can buy this on its own on, on vinyl. Um, I mean, Bob. I'd say we're working with Bob Mould at the moment on, on a fantastic box set, which maybe by the time this this video airs might have, might have seen the light of day. Um, he's a a really, really fascinating character, obviously, Bob from Husky Deer era through to Sugar, Solo Sugar, and then all the sort of interesting electronic stuff through the late 90s. So he's someone who isn't scared to kind of change his sound and, and move on. And even now, I mean, the new album out at the moment, you know, very angsty American sort of punk rock, really. So, yeah, yeah this, is a, this is a really, really interesting set. So the set features stuff from the Solo era. It's actually got quite a lot of Husky Deer tracks on here as well, plus... Sort of the obvious favourites from Sugar as well, things like Hoover Dam. Um, so yeah, this is this is a really really great set, and, and it rests on double. This is the bit that he enjoys the most, folks. Go on, tease him. Oh, do it again. Tease him. Yeah, oh, yeah. clear vinyl again. Yeah, we're slightly obsessed by clear vinyl at the moment. I think I think I think our favourite colour vinyl at the moment is is probably clear and white. I think you can't go wrong with clear or white vinyl. It just looks. Right, I'm, I'm sure someone will comment about, uh, I'll, probably, I'll probably accidentally fingered one of these records wrong as well, so probably someone will say something, and someone will probably also say that white's the worst sounding vinyl there is, or whatever, but um, they look great. I think Record Store Day is all about fans and excitement and marketing, and, and I think yeah. the colour of the vinyl and all these things are all part of it, and they're all intrinsic to it, really. So, um, yeah. yeah, it's about being a fan, be, isn't it? Definitely, it's about being a fan and being you know however this year is going to work you have to be a fan to want to get up at five in the morning and stand in the driving rain in a queue and do a bit of small talk with some people you probably never speak to again and all those things but it's all part of the day it's all part of the yeah. you know the social the camaraderie really. and 
yeah. definitely yeah and I think I think that's what you know that that's what you know anybody who's watching this now is is makes them different from kind of just a casual music fan on Spotify is somebody who actually wants to go out and have that tangibility and have all yeah. this sort of stuff behind you you know it's a part of it yeah. isn't it this year is a very very important year as far as um demons history is concerned um you know 40 years uh, a happy 40th birthday you're looking swell dolly um anything <laughs> special anything special planned for this year well i think uh it's, it's obviously an interesting year the the anniversary the 40th anniversary was actually in may i think we, we were planning on doing something to celebrate it obviously that's been put on the back burner for now um but we're gonna we've got we've got a few bits that we're going to put together we're going to try and share with fans a kind of a little bit of the history of demon um over our socials and uh over the next few months really i mean it's an inter it's a really interesting history obviously of starting with yeah jake jake and elvis yeah at the beginning Andrew Lord and then obviously at the beginning and then yeah. your, your your involvement with those early singles you know banana armor and um yeah, and Department then, S and TV21 with the guy who I was working for, who, who did the, the, the promotion for, um, you know, for Elvis Costello, a lovely fella called Clive Banks. Yeah, and, and kind of how we've got from there to, I guess, today, really, where we, you know, the kind of releases that we've just been talking about now, we've got the box sets, we've got yeah. the vinyl, the sort of the audio vinyl bits, and all the sort of interesting bits we're doing now, really. I mean, every every company has to evolve to... To you know, to be to be re relevant and credible these days, and I think we've done really yeah. well to, to to stay relevant and, and interesting. You know, we've got great some great releases out now. Um, every year, I surprise myself. We we release something. I think, wow, last year I never thought we'd do something like that. And I think that's the interesting bit about the company. It keeps evolving and changing with what's going on in the market. So yeah, hopefully, yeah. lots lots more exciting things to come. So Ben, that is almost about it. Um, just to say, folks, if you want to find out more about Record Store Day, uh, just go to uh, the website recordstoreday.co.uk and you can find out what's available and which stores are taking place. If you want to find out more about Demon's releases for Record Store Day 2020, then just hit the website demonmusicgroup.co.uk. Ben, it's been an absolute pleasure. Uh, who knows, maybe a career at QVC awaits us both. I'll see you for uh, a socially distanced coffee at some point down the line. All the best for this year. Looking forward to it. Cheers, Gary. See ya.